Hello and welcome to the presentation about the inclined plane. Uh, just as a warm-up, make sure that you've got some of the requisite knowledge required to um, access this information. Um, have a go at looking at these vectors and seeing which picture is the odd one out. So we have two vectors added together and they're saying that it will add up to this red one. So just have a look and see if you can work it out. Uh, maybe pause the video. Okay, so if, you ha if you've had a look, hopefully mentally you're able to do something like this. Okay? Take the vectors, add them tail to tip, so here's the tail of this vector, I'll put it on the tip of this vector, the purple one, and the purple and the blue one have added up to the red vector. Okay, similarly, the same thing for this, if I take this one and put it there, I, I still get the sum being the red vector. Okay, uh, if you actually notice, uh, the purple here and here are identical, and the blue here and here are identical. It doesn't matter what order you add up the vectors, as you see, it was blue plus purple, and this time it was purple plus blue. It doesn't matter the order, you still get the same result. Okay, down here we had slightly different sizes. Those down, down here we have slightly different sizes, and we can still see that they still add up to the red one. In this case, though, if you can do it in your head before you see it, that helps. You can see that we've got a little bit left over. It doesn't quite add up, so this is the odd one out. Okay, the correct answer to the sum of the blue and the purple vector would have been this red one here we've just drawn in. Okay, so this is all about the inclined plane and the uh, aim of this presentation is so that you'll be able to visualize the components of a force and to be able to analyze the forces acting on an inclined plane. Right, so what we're going to do is look at three cases that shed some light on the inclined plane. Firstly, a perfectly horizontal plane, okay, and let's look at the weight of this car due to gravity uh, and where it's acting from. So let's say we draw the red arrow on from the center of mass of the car and uh, uh, it would just be straight down with the magnitude of the weight of the car, mg. Okay, let's have a look at a slope. On a slope, I don't think you'd be surprised that mg is still going to act perfectly downwards and the magnitude would be the same. Okay, now let's have a look at uh, vertically. So now mg is still acting completely down. So in all cases, mg was the same. So if we was to just draw the weight on each of these three cases on a, on a horizontal plane, a plane at 45 degrees and vertical, mg, the magnitude and direction is all the same. Now let's have a look at another one of the forces we're interested in. Okay, One of the components of mg. The component of mg that acts along or acts parallel to the inclined plane. So when the plane is horizontal, there's no force. This guy doesn't have to apply any force to stop this car from rolling away. Okay. When the car is on this 45 degree slope, now he's got to pull quite hard to be able to stop this, um, the component of gravity that's acting down the plane, pulling the car off. Okay. And when it's on a vertical, he's got to be super strong to be able to hold it. That's the most difficult um, scenario for this guy. So let's look at that in terms of forces. So the force is parallel to the inclined plane. When it's horizontal, no force, nothing. Okay? You don't draw a dot when there's no force. I've just put a dot there to make it visually, un you understand what I'm talking about. Okay, now we're on a 45 degree plane. The component of this red arrow acting down the plane is a bit bigger. Okay? And then finally you get to um, when it's completely vertical and the component is exactly equal to the the magnitude of the gravity. So you can get rid of gravity and just replace it with the purple arrow. Okay, so uh, we start with no vertical, no um, force parallel to the plane. It gets larger and then it's at its largest. All right, now let's look at another force. Okay, so now we're looking at forces perpendicular to the plane. So right now, perpendicular means uh, if you've got a plane, you draw a line 90 degrees to it down this way. Okay, so now you've got this guy underneath here, okay, and he's holding the car up. And right now, he's being crushed. He's in pain. It's a lot of force. Okay, if we put him on a 45 degree plane, I think you can imagine that the force is going to be less now. The force of the car pushing on him isn't going to be as bad. It's like someone leaning on you or something. It's not, it's, it still would be a lot of force and it would, it would probably hurt him, but it wouldn't be as bad. Okay, and if we have the force, uh, if we have the uh, plane vertical, there's no force. Okay, so we can now add those perpendicular forces to our diagrams. Okay, so perpendicular to the plane, okay, we'd have a force which would be equal to gravity. In this case, the car just crushing the guy. So we can get rid of the gravity as in previous previously. 
this time it's going to be again perpendicular and uh, in this case there would be none so I've just put the dot just to show there would be nothing there okay so we've seen all the forces involved now and now we want to see how we can uh, find useful information about it okay so well I'll just go back a second if we look at this red arrow here I hope you can see that if we took this purple line and this blue line and we took him and we shifted him down here you could see that it would add up to the red line if you summed the purple and the sorry the purple and the blue line you'd get the red line okay uh, and that's how this whole thing works all right so what do we know about things on an inclined plane well we know that the gravity is going to be perfectly vertical i know the direction gravity will act in so that's this red line okay i also know that any forces uh, that I'm going to be interested in probably are going to be parallel to the plane. Okay, that's what's going to give me the most information about how the car will move or accelerate. So I can draw a line parallel to the plane. Okay, and I can also draw a line perpendicular to the plane. Now, to help me analyze this, first thing I'll do is draw in the gravity. Okay, gravity will always be the biggest line when you're looking at an inclined plane. Um, and gravity will be, you could make gravity from two separate components. In your imagination, you can break it up into super, two separate components that add up to the red line. Okay? So one of those components will be parallel to the plane, the purple line. Okay? And if you added it to the perpendicular um, to the plane, uh, the, the line perpendicular to the plane, the force perpendicular to the plane, it's going to add up to the weight. So this purple line and this blue line, they add up to the weight. Okay, so now let's try applying that to a question. Uh, please read the question, pause it, and maybe have a go yourself. Have a little sketch and have a go yourself. Okay, so if you've read the question and had a little think about it, then um, now you're ready to start um, taking some of the information from the question and adding it to the diagram. This is my what I always do when I'm trying to answer a question in physics. I always read the question carefully, try and extract the information from it that um, I can uh, I can get and uh, add it to the diagram. It makes it easier for me to understand what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to draw in um, a line vertically downwards for uh, the weight, right? This is the mass, so this is going to be mass multiplied by gravity, mg, because I want the force, the weight, in newtons. So mg, now I can start adding on those other, the components of mg. Okay, so I'll use a different colour, and uh, if I can remember, I think I was using, let's quickly go back, I was using purple for parallel to the plane, so I'll do the same again. Uh, purple, so there should be a force, I want to try and get it parallel. Okay, and there's a force acting per perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so about here. And you've got to really try and be accurate with these diagrams, otherwise it gets confusing. Okay, I haven't used a ruler or anything, so, um, uh, you know, it doesn't, it probably isn't helping things. And uh, I'll just use that purple colour again. So I'm going to take this vector here, and I'm going to take it down here. And this line, and this line here, are parallel to each other, okay? this line is perpendicular to this line right so now I've got the triangle that's going to help me solve this problem okay so I'll just go back to a normal color to write in okay so um, this is just a standard triangle now from geometry you should be able to work out that this angle here is also 30 degrees okay and um, now I'm, I'm really slow at doing the trigonometry and I'll do it the slow way because I think it's it's easier for you to understand if I just uh, say sine, cos, and shout these things out. It's hard to follow, so I'll do it the slow way. I'm going to label my triangle. That's the hypotenuse. This is opposite the angle, so I'm going to label that one opposite and adjacent. And I have the numbers for mg, and I want to find the force that's stopping the train from moving. Okay, The force that's stopping the train from moving is going to be exactly equal in magnitude to the purple arrow. It's going to be opposite the purple arrow in direction. So if I find the magnitude of the purple arrow, it's the same as the force that's stopping the train from moving. 
So I've got opposite, I've got hypotenuse, so so I was taught to do it in maths, so car toa. And I've got opposite and I've got hypotenuse, so I'm going to use sine. I've got the angle 30 is equal to opposite of the hypotenuse. I've got the opposite, I've got the hypotenuse, which is mg. Rearrange this for the opposite, which is what my force is going to be. So I'll just call that f I wanted to, uh, unknown f. So um, si mg sine 30 will be equal to f. Okay, and mg is going to be. 2000, sorry, 20,000 kilograms, and I'm going to take gravity to be 9.81 meters per second squared. I don't know why it doesn't work very well in the corners. Um, so I'm going to multiply by 9.81, multiply this by sine 30, sine 30, and uh, just get my calculator. And this gives me an answer of 98100 zero, zero newtons. Okay, so the force acting down the plane is just... So the answer for the first question is 98100 zero, zero newtons. Okay, okay. let's have a look at the second part. Okay, so in a previous video I've done, I've talked about... Um, Newton's second law, or F is equal to MA, and that's all you're being asked to use here. It's asking for the acceleration if this force was removed. What would the acceleration on the train be? So there'd be a force of 98100 newtons acting down, down the hill, and you've got the mass of the train, so you can just use F is equal to MA. Rearrange for A, and um, it's going to be 98100 divided by the mass 20 and 23 new uh, kilograms and just work that out so just round that to 4.9 and its acceleration so it's going to be meters per second squared okay so I hope this was useful um, let's have a look at just a summary of what you should have learned okay so first things first if you get a question like this um, you can draw the component of mg that holds the car or whatever it is onto the slope. This is at 90 degrees to the slope. Okay. Then draw a parallel line to the slope, um, completing the triangle. Okay. This bit here. Right. Uh, mg. Sorry. Mg will always be the biggest line. Okay. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, um, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much.